What's going on guys? It's me, NJT, but you could call me Nick and that's right, we are back. And that's right, we are doing another book review. We haven't done one of these in a little while. I will check how long it's been, but um, I'm very sorry that I'm very late with Step Close. It's just that we've been playing so much Danganronpa and I didn't want to just put this in while we're doing all this Danganronpa stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry it's been a very long time since we've done one of these. Um, but, you know, since the new FNAF IR thing was out, so I just wanted to, you know, do FNAF today. I just felt like doing FNAF. I was going to do, um, maybe another Fall Guys thing. Jeez, it's been two months. Two months since we've done, even longer, two months and, um, and 13 days since we have done a book review. Um, yes, I am very late to step closer. Um, but, oh well, what a shame. Doesn't really matter. But, uh, yeah, so we are, we're doing some more. We're going to um, be reviewing um, Step Closer, Fazbear Frights 4. We're going to be doing full analysis on the whole book, not just one story. Um, we're going to be doing the whole thing, even the Stitch Wrath at the end. Even the Stitch Wrath. The Stitch Wrath is very interesting, this one. This one is a very interesting Stitch Wrath. Um, so, yeah, and this is the first book review with my new headset. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Um... So yeah, step closer. This is really good. Um, had some really good stories in it, but the last two stories, um, they were pretty crap. Um, yeah, they were pretty boring. But um, step closer. The actual step closer. The um book about Foxy was really good. So um, let's go straight into it. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, so yeah, let's go. So step closer. Um. Let me just figure what's the, what's his name. What was the um, name of his brother? Chuck. Okay, so step closer. The first book. Um, Pete, the older brother, is um has a sibling. His name's Chuck. So he usually annoys Chuck um quite a lot. He calls him. I think he calls him like Chuck the Champ or something. He calls him. Some silly name, I forget what it is now, I haven't read Step Closer in like, it's been a while since I've read the, well, uh, anyway, anyway, you're moving on, so, yeah, um, Chuck has, um, you know, so Chuck is at, um, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, along with, um, Pete, so this, miss, that means that, um, this story must have taken place early on in the whole series of the book, like, because, Usually in the books, sometimes Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is closed down, and sometimes it's open. When it's open, that must mean it must have been before, like around the 1980s and stuff. And then the the books or the stories where the um place the pizza place is closed, that means it must be taking um place present day. So yeah, um they're at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and Pete um takes. Um, Chuck, he grabs Chuck and he's like, oh, come with me, I want to show you something really cool. And they go to this, like, really creepy back room with, um, with something that you guys should pay attention to. I didn't really pay attention to this, and then I finally realized how important this big thing was. This, li this little thing. Um, there were candles, and there was, like, a pentagram on the walls and candles. And so, um, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention something. At the start of the book, it says that, um, Pete had a dream w where he, um, where Foxy got, stabbed him in the eye, and there was blood everywhere, and Foxy said, if you want to be a pirate, uh, you have to lose an eye and an arm. So, yeah, um, yeah. So then Pete and... Um, and then, um, so yeah, Pete shows, um, Chuck Foxy, and Chuck gets pretty creeped out, so he runs away like a, like a pussy, so yeah, uh, by Chuck he goes. And then, um, then Pete hears Foxy say, um, what does he say? You can be a pirate, but first you have to lose an eye and an arm. And then... Yeah, Pete heard that, and um, he kept repeating it, and yeah, first you have to just, nah, 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 nah. he keeps repeating it, he doesn't stop repeating it. After they pressed this, yeah, well, they pressed this button, Foxy Act of the Valid, and he kept saying that, um, yeah, he kept saying that, so, yeah. So then, um, Chuck and Pete, they leave, and after Chuck pushing away, um, so, yeah. 
That's what happens. And then after that, um, about a day or two later, Pete goes to school, and his mum said that he has to go pick up some bread or something. So he goes to pick up the bed, the bread. He picks up the bed. He picks up the bread at the um. At a, um, at like a butcher shop or something with, you know, butchers and stuff. There was like butcher knives hanging from the top of the ceiling. Like, like this. Just pretend this is a butcher knife hanging on the top of the ceiling. And when Pete walks in, he walks in. The butcher knife. <laughs> it leans nearly on his arm. It just misses his arm. The butcher knife, it falls. And it nearly hits his arm, which is pretty, pretty, pretty strange and pretty creepy. So yeah, he um he nearly lands on his arm. Yeah, that's that's creepy. Oh, and I forgot to mention this. Um before um Pete nearly lost his arm at school, he um there was uh like they were doing experiments with frogs and stuff. And then one of the kid that was next to him got the frog's arm and he he squeezed the eye out of the um of the frog's he just squeezed the eye out, he popped it or something, just got it out. And then he cuts the arm off, and he gets the, um, the arm. I don't really have anything to pretend that there's an arm. He grabs the arm, he's like, he just waves it. <laughs> he waves it at, um, Pete, which is strange. It's very strange, very strange story. The story is really cool, but it's very, you know, makes you think. Um, and so after that, Pete, um, I think he falls... And then a scalpel, or like a sharp object, it falls, and it's just about to hit his eye, like, um, like this. So he falls, Ooh! oh, crap, my headset doesn't go that far. So he falls, right, he falls, and then, uh, pretend like a scalpel or something, it falls off the desk. It's gonna go right in his eye, but with his quick reflexes, he stops it. He stops it from stabbing his eye. So yeah, that's, um, that's what happened. He stops it from stabbing his eye. And, um, yeah, he stops him from stabbing his eye, and so, after that, he goes to the butcher shop and nearly gets his arm chopped off by a, um, butcher knife, and then, he's like, hello, is anyone here? Then a guy finally emerges from the back, and, um, yeah, he gives him the bread, goes home, you know, and, um, yeah, he goes home. I'm joking, the story doesn't end there. Um, he goes home after that. And then, um, the next day, he, uh, goes, he's walking to school, he go, walks to school, he walks to school, wakey wakey time for school, he walks to school, and then, um, then, out of nowhere, there's just, like, this building site, there's, like, these people building, you know, builders, building stuff, and then there's a saw, people using saws there. And boom, then the saw is going, like, it flings off something, and it, when it gets flinged, it hits Pete's arm, cuts it, and it, this is a pre it's a pretty deep cut too, I'm pretty sure, cuts him right there, right there, like, somewhere on his arm, here. He's like, oh, god damn, man, you know, he probably swears or something, I don't know. And he, you know, it hurt him, it hurt him badly. Um, and then the workers come over and say, oh, sorry, man, really sorry about that. And then after that, he goes home, and he's pretty boozed up after that. Excuse me. He's pretty bruised after that, poor guy. Um, so yeah. Excuse me, sorry about that. So yeah, he um goes home. He goes home. Oh, and by the way, his parents are divorced. Just letting you know, his parents are divorced. So you know, um, yeah, his parents are divorced. And when he goes home, he um he sees his dad there. His dad's home, because um I think what happened was they called um the ambulance and then he was all fine. And then his mum was contacted, and so his dad, his mum contact, contacted the dad, and the dad was home waiting for um, Pete to come back. Um, so yeah, and then when um, Pete gets home, his dad's there, 
and uh, yeah, and so uh, that's like, oh, you're right, you came in, and so uh, yeah, he goes, um, and then his dad, his dad says, oh, you want to go on a fishing trip, you know, just to relax me and you, and so yeah, he goes, yeah, Chuck, I'm um, Pete's, I'm um, not Chuck, I meant Pete, Pete's like, yeah, alright, I'll come with you. So he goes with um his dad to the um to um fishing and so yeah they're fishing you know they're just chilling and then Pete starts talking to his dad about oh why you why'd you leave us and stuff and then his dad keeps saying oh I want to try and look after you and Chuck and stuff so yeah you just you know they have that talk and stuff and um they keep talking. And there's this other guy who's just fishing, you know, fishing. I don't really have anything to... Pre I don't pretend this, this is the core, this is the fishing rod. This guy's fishing. He pulls out the thing. He pulls, like, this other guy's fishing. And then a hook out of nowhere comes in. And he gets Pete. Right here. <laughs> right next to the eye. Not in the eye. Next to it, like, just there. He gets stuck in his, um, stuck right here, um, stuck in his head, I wouldn't say, I don't know what you call this part, it's like, the, he gets stuck right next to his eye, and him and his dad, they try to get it out, you know, and try to get it out, and yes, they do, obviously, they get it out, they get the hook out, and then, he's like, what the hell, man, what the hell, and then, um, apparently, the dad's like, and then the guy's like, oh, sorry, man, I'm really sorry, and then Pete gets, he, He's a little, in his mind, you, he says that he's angry, like, he gets angry in his mind, he doesn't actually get angry at the guy, he just gets angry in his mind, and then his dad says, oh, it was a freak accident, and nah, it's all good, man, it's a freak accident, says the dad, or something like that, and then, um, and then, Pete, before that, when he, you know how the buzzsaw hit him on the arm, um, his dad and, his dad called it a freak accident, too, so, freak accidents everywhere, you know? Freak accident, freak accident. So, yeah, poor Pete, he gets hit in the eye, and he gets hit in the arm. It's pretty, you know, poor guy. So, yeah, Pete gets a little angry about this, and then, um... Yeah, you gotta feel bad for Pete. He's getting abused by all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh... After that... Pete has a, um, Pete has a, uh, sorry, he, I was thinking of something, so then Pete goes to sleep that night, and he has a very strange dream, you know at the start of the, um, story I told you guys that Pete had, um, well, there was this thing where, um, Foxy cut out, um, Pete's arm and stuff, uh, or cut out his eye, he popped his eye out, well, yeah, this dream, Pete was sleeping, and then Foxy comes up, and you know, of course, he says, "You have to, yeah. If you can be a pirate, but first you have to lose an eye and an arm." And then Pete, he says, "No." And then Foxy slams the hook straight into his eye, and then you can hear a pop, like in the book, it literally says there was a pop. So that's that's jeez, man. Imagine. Yeah, that's what happened. So, um, there was a pop, and then, um, Foxy bites Pete's arm, and, uh, yeah, then the dream ends, and there was blood everywhere in the dream. Blood here, blood there, blood everywhere, dripping. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty graphic dream, like, pretty gory dream. Like, damn, man, pretty, pretty gory. So, yeah, that was, um, Pete's dream at the start of the story. I don't know why it said it at the start of the story, too. It didn't really need to say it at the start of the story. It just did anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah, that was Pete's dream about Foxy trying to lose an eye and an arm for him. And so, um, oh, and so, then, uh, Pete, he wakes up, obviously, from that dream, and he, um, well, after that dream, you know, he's a little, he got a little freaked out by that dream, and so then, um, there's, um, he goes to school, and there's, like, this event, like, this party event, or, not really a party, like a, 
you know, like, a, you know how sometimes at school they have, like, those, those party days or something, um, yeah, there was one of those, and, um, when, uh, Pete got to school, um, when he got to school, he, uh, he went, and he saw, um, there was, like, this banner across the school, and, uh, guess what it was, it was, like, wear, be a pirate day or something, it was, like, wear pirate clothes and stuff, so, yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty strange, uh, you know, um, so, yeah, there was, a, like, be a pirate day, I don't know, I forget what it, what it really was, um, but, yeah, so, it was be a pirate day, um, and so, yeah, Pete goes to school, and he, he goes, uh, sorry, I'm just looking something up so I can get the thumbnail for this video, um, <clears throat> So he goes um to school school and um oops so yeah he like there's like this thing um where you put your hand in and he um puts the puts his hand in this thing where you put you where you put your hand in this thing and I don't know you get a prize or something a prize or something. And, um, so what happens to Pete is, he, um, one of his, um, friends, well, like, it's a, it's a girl, I forget her name, um, I saw her in the story before, um, yeah, oh, oh, sorry, before he goes to school, um, a little while before, um, Pete and Chuck have a huge argument, um, over, um, Foxy, um, so, Chuck was playing a game, and, um, people's like, oh, what you playing, and then he's, and then Chuck's like, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing, like, uh, there's this town, and it's, it's cursed, it's a cursed town, and, um, I've, you've, I've got to put the, um, I've got to not, I've got to, I've got to not, Okay, so this is a town, um, so Chuck says, so, on the game, there's a cursed, the town is cursed, and he needs to put a stop to the curse, um, so he's like the hero in the story, and he has to stop the curse, you know, and so, that's what he, um, that's what the m mission of the game is to do, you got to stop the curse, um, so yeah, that that's a big hint for um you know the actual story about the book. Um so yeah, and then after that excuse me, they're talking about Foxy and how um Pete always, you know, something nearly hits his eye or nearly cuts his arm off. They're talking about it then Chuck has um says that it's a curse, man, it's a curse. And then Pete's like, "Nah, I don't believe in that crap, man. It's all so stupid." Then Chuck then they both start fighting, they start arguing over it. Chuck goes into Pete's room, tries to convince him, and then Pete goes, Get out of my room! Get out! And so, yeah, then Chuck and Pete, they got really angry at each other. And they, uh, yeah, they, you know, they, they had a f huge fight. And then their mum comes in, and, you know, she doesn't stop it. She just comes in, and she's like, Stop, boys! And then... After that, they just go their separate ways, and then, um, yeah, they have a huge argument, um, the next day, uh, I don't think they've made up yet, no, they haven't made up yet, and so then, yeah, then Pete goes to school, he sees that, um, it's a pirate-themed thing, which is strange, and, uh, yeah, so he goes to school, and he, so he goes to, um, like, his friends, his friend's thing, which it's a girl, and he goes there, and it's like, you got to put your hand in, or, on stuff, and you get something, or something like that, so, Pete put his hand in, and, um, so she's like, yeah, put your hand in, and then he puts his hand in, and then when he pulls it out, there's a Chinese finger trap on it, you know those Chinese finger traps here, I'll get you guys a photo of one, um, so yeah, he got a Chinese finger trap got stuck on his finger, and he tried to get it off, he's like, <coughs> he couldn't get it off, you know, it was 
just wasn't coming out for him, the poor guy. Um, so, so yeah, it couldn't, couldn't get it out, and, um, sorry, let me just try and, yeah, a Chinese finger trap, so, you know, one of these, one of these guys, one of these things, so, yeah, he gets, um, gets stuck on one of these, and his finger, just pretend that it's, just one finger, you know, just that finger that happened to, um, to, um, to, uh, Pete, he gets the finger trap stuck in him, he can't, you know, he can't get it out, he tries to get it out, and then there's this other guy there, and he's like, oh, sorry, man, and it was just a prank, and he gets all angry, get it off now, and Pete's in a bad mood, he gets really pissed off at them, at them, at, at, at them, Jesus, my voice, and, he tries to get it off, they try cutting it off, and they, like, get the scissors and cut it, like, that, you know, they get it off. Oh, sorry about that, um, and he gets it off, and he's, and they're like, sorry, it was just a joke, it was just, we are just had, trying to have a bit of fun, you know, and they're like, no, I don't like that, that was dumb, don't do that again. And he gets pissed off, and then he just storms off, and, um, the girl and her friends just like, mm, bruh, like, bruh, or like, something like that, and so then, um, Pete, he walks off, and he, um, goes into, like, there's, like, this maze thing, he goes into this maze thing, like, this, it's like a mirror maze or something, and he goes, and he, uh, and he sees, um, he sees, like, someone, uh, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, I had the burp, excuse me, sorry, pardon me, excuse me, um, so he goes into the maze, and he, um, goes into the maze, he, and he, um, sorry, I'm just doing something, yeah, he goes into the maze, um, and, like, he sees this guy, or not this guy, but, like, he sees, like, a, a fox, like, a fox, like, a foxy thing, like, someone with the foxy thing, like, a foxy mask, it just looks like foxy, and, gets totally freaked out, Pete gets totally freaked out, and he's in the maze, and he's like, ah, go away, and he starts running, he runs, man, he runs, and then that foxy thing is chasing after him really fast, it's like catching up, you know, um, foxy's really fast, we just really aren't coming for that, but yeah, he's that fast, He he's like this, runs, they're both running, it's like a chase scene, um, and then the foxy thing leaps like the, um, like the foxy jump scare, and um, you don't have to leaps at him and p puts him to the ground, and then Pete he punches the foxy thing, and then he looks at the the thing that he just punched, and it turns out it was just a pirate. So I think Pete had a hallucination or something, and he thought it was foxy, but it was actually just a pirate, just a kid, just up as a pirate. And then when he got out of the maze, all the kid these People are like, ah, ha, 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 you punched him, ah, ha, you thought he was something, ah, ha. And they were laughing at him. Poor Pete. So they started laughing at him. He storms off even more angry. And, uh, yeah. So, then, <coughs> he, um... So, okay, so yeah, he gets, um, he's still even, he's even more angry now, and then there's these kids that are just throwing darts, right, and so he nearly, darts gets thrown, nearly it's his eye, nearly it's his eye, it's like, like, say this is a dart, say this is a dart, someone throws it, and it lands right there next to his eye, and nearly hits him, nearly takes his eye out, nearly takes his eye out, but it didn't take his eye out, lucky for Pete. And so then, Pete's like, alright, it's, it's time to end this. Uh, I'm done, I'm finished, I, I can't take this anymore. Oh, crap. And so Pete, he, um, he goes, um, he, like, he's like, 
he gets um he gets his phone and he calls um Okay, so he calls um Chuck and he's like, "Look, I'm sorry, man. Um, I'm sorry about. Uh, he just says I'm sorry, but you were right. It is a curse. It was a curse. Um, Foxy has put me on a curse. We're gonna go back. We're gonna stop Foxy. We're gonna actually go face him. Um, um, so he he goes. He calls um Chuck and he goes." Um, he, um, calls Chuck, says that we're going to go back to the pizzeria and face Foxy, and so then, um, then, then Pete runs, he goes into the road, Chuck comes, it hits him, he goes flying, and he hits, like, the bushes or something, he goes flying, bang, and then he, you know, it's pretty sad, but the thing is, what happened to me when I was reading this story, when I was reading Step Closer, I missed that page, I didn't read that page for some reason, I didn't actually read the page where he gets hit, I didn't read it for some reason, I don't know why, I just didn't read it, which was strange for me, because I feel like, um, I don't know why, but, I'm pretty sure I just, um, I like, um, I think I just skipped over it or something, but I, I did, um, <clears throat> I did do it, I just, you know, um, so yeah, um, what actually happened, I missed the whole, I missed the whole page, and it said, um, in a blind panic, Pete rushed off the sidewalk and into the street. He sensed something speeding toward him and he turned. That's when a truck smashed into him with extreme force. His body went flying, his limbs twisting, and at one moment and one moment felt like forever. Then he crashed, his body slamming the hard ground. He felt a crack, then a shadow that force scolded his skin against the road as he rolled and rolled, leaving a path of blood behind him. Pain was everywhere, then everything went dark. I missed this. I missed this part of the story. So I didn't actually find out until later in the story that he got hit. And so then Chuck... Chuck sees the message, sneaks out of school. And he goes, um... He he wants to go back to the pizzeria. But his dad gives him a call. And he's like, Chuck, are you out of school or something? And then he's like... Yeah, Pete told me that um he wanted to go somewhere with me, so I wanted to come with him. And then his dad comes, picks Pete up, um, picks picks Chuck up, and he um and he tells him, "This is where I find out that Pete got hit by a truck." I didn't actually, uh, excuse me. Sadly, I missed that part. Um. So yeah, I missed that part, and then I only I only found out when um Chuck's dad told Chuck, which uh, it really baffled me. Um, so yeah, it really shocked me when I found out because I didn't ever even re I missed the page where it said that Chuck got hit. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I was really sad when I found out, because, you know, it just, it, it's never really, that's not, it's not really that bad, you know, in the books, it's not as bad as being hit by a truck, like, it's, it was really bad when I read it, I got uh, sad, man, it was really sad, Chuck lost the, his brother, man, and so then, Chuck, after being upset and crying for a bit, after a while, He's like, I've got to go back. Uh, I've got to go back. Goes back to the pizzeria. And I'll read you guys the last page. He pulled out his inhaler as his breath breaths thinned and took a puff. 
when he shoved his inhaler into his pocket and pulled out his phone light. He went straight to the small stage and straight to the open control box. No more wasting time. Shiva called down his back, but he ignored it. If he hesitated, he knew he wouldn't do it, and he'd be on, he'd be he'd been replaying this moment over and over in his in this in his head. He had to do it. He had to find out what happened to Pete. This is for you, Pete, he said in the dark room. I'll face the villain and beat the game. He braced himself and slammed down on the start button. He waited for the curtain to pull back for Foxy to begin to sing, but nothing happened. All Chuck heard was complete silence. Foxy didn't turn on. So yeah, it was a very, very dark, very sad story. Theory time. So, um, this, um, the, the reason I think they chose Foxy to be, um, the, the, um, animatronic for that story, or the villain or the monster of that story, is because people think that this ties in to, um, Michael Afton and the Crying Child. Um, I think it's a good theory, um, but people do think that it ties into um, Michael and the Crying Child, the two brothers, you know, Foxy Bro and Crying Bro. It is, it's, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into it, because, you know, I don't really, I mean, the theory's okay, I mean, it's just that I'm, I don't really agree with it as much, because, you know, um, so, yeah, um, I don't know if I really agree with that theory, it's a good theory, you should go check it out on Game Theory, um, but it's, it may be possible, it may confirm the two brothers, um, Michael Afton and the Crying Child, um, but, yeah, it might confirm it, but we don't know, we don't know, Scott never tells us anything, so thanks, Scott, um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, um, theory, I have a theory that I maybe, um, since... Foxy didn't actually activate when Chuck went back. Is maybe because Foxy that was Foxy's job to I don't know kill someone or something like that. But the thing is, the thing is, remember at the start how I told you that there were candles and like a pentagram in the room. Well, um, that means something. It was a curse. It was a curse put by Foxy. Foxy put a curse. On Pete. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know, animatronic stuff, William Afton building robotics. It's a real curse. And it's sort of confirmed that it's a curse when... Uh, there's always these little details in the stories that I miss, but I re... I watch Stalker's videos and it tells... And it tells me more about the story so I can, you know, just talk to you guys about it. But, um... In the story, remember how I told you guys that um Chuck was playing that game? Chuck was playing the game where the village was under a spell and he had to stop it? Yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty much confirming that Pete was on a was under a curse by Foxy. I think someone must have went into that back room or someone must have since Foxy was you know, they put a curse on Foxy, and maybe, this is my theory, maybe because, since they put a curse on Foxy, maybe that's why Foxy is out of order, maybe that is why Foxy is out of order, because someone put a curse on him, so think about that, it's a good, I think it's, I think that's something, you know, that you should think about, maybe Foxy is out of order, because someone put a curse on him. But, you know, we don't get stuff confirmed. So, yeah. 
Well, yeah, that was step close. I really enjoyed step close. So that was, um, I, it was a good, it was a good um story. Now on to, um, one of the worst stories out of all of them. Dance with me. It's about Ballora, so let's go. So, um, there's this girl, um, what's her name? What's her name? Casey. So she's poor. She lives with these two boys, um, and they live in this old abandoned warehouse. Um, you know, they're very poor, they don't, well, Casey did have, um, a mother, but, um, her mother, you know, she didn't really care about Casey too much, she didn't care about her at all, um, so yeah, so Casey just sort of, well, her mom sort of kicked her out of the house, because, um, she had a boyfriend, and she kicked her out, which was pretty mean, and she had, she had some pretty good, she had pretty good grades in school, but, um, she got kicked out of the house, and now she was homeless, and she met the two boys, and, um, they're stealers, they rob stuff from people, so they can feed themselves, I mean, you, you gotta feel some, you gotta feel bad for them, um, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't think it tells, tells us much about the two boys in this story, but, um, you gotta feel bad for, um, Casey and the two boys, because, you know, Casey was kicked out of her home, and she couldn't really do anything about it, she didn't have a lot of money, so, she went with these two boys, so they could, so they have to steal and stuff, so, um, the story starts at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and, um, Casey takes, um, a purse off of a lady, and, um, her child was next to her, and the child of, um, the lady saw Casey steal the purse, and, um, so they looked in the purse, um, there was like a, like a, um, like a, uh, gas credit card for like, so you can buy stuff at, um, the gas station, you know, um, you go inside the gas station, there's lollies and stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, they um get a um a gas credit card and her actual credit card. So they know that they need to use the credit cards before um they expire because you know if they when they expire they won't be able to use them anymore. Um so yeah. And um uh, um yeah, Casey um <coughs> excuse me. And then Casey sees these glasses in there. Um, these wooden glasses, like cardboard glasses, you know, like cardboard glasses here, I'll look up, I'll show you guys a photo of one. It's cardboard glasses with lenses, um, I, I don't know, I think they're lenslessness, I don't know, I, th I don't know if they have lens or not, I don't remember, but, um, yeah, um, it was cardboard, um, glasses, and Casey put them on, and she saw, like, this, and she felt dizzy when she put them on, she felt really dizzy, you know. And then, in the distance, she saw a dancing, um, ballerina. And she said it looked like a hologram. Oh, and something I forgot to mention. When they were stealing the purse, it was at Circus Baby's Pizza World. It was at Circus Baby's Pizza World, where Ballora Baby and the Funtime Animatronics were. So, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Sorry about that. But, yeah. When they stole the purse, it was at Circus Baby's Pizza World. And, um... So she put on the glasses in the wet when they went back to the warehouse, and there um she saw Ballora dancing um pretty far away from her though, and um yeah oh, I can't find a good photo of what they look like. They saw like VR goggle glasses. Anyway, um you you know what they are. You know what they are. They're just cardboard glasses. Um. And so. They, um. It doesn't. It doesn't get a good photo. Sorry, anyway. You guys know. Cardboard glasses. If you don't know what they are, just look them up yourself. Um. So. Yeah. Drop the book. And, um. So, she tells the boys to put on the glasses. And they put them on. And they don't see Ballora, which is strange. I don't know why they did this in the book, but they don't see Ballora, but only Casey does. Only Casey can see Ballora. And, um... Every time Casey sort of 
like walks around, she puts on the glasses. She still feels dizzy, or like a while after. She puts on the glasses and near like a dumpster, she sees Ballora dancing again. You know, swir swirling like this. Just like what Ballora does in the games. And, um, yeah, she saw Ballora doing that. Uh, this time she was a little bit closer um, than before. Excuse me, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. And so, um, Casey was walking in the park once. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, she was just strolling. Excuse me, and she sees, um, like these leaves. She sees them, like, swirling around something. She doesn't know what, but... They see, she sees them swirling around something, and when she put the glasses on, she sees Ballora swirling around the um, leaves, which is pretty strange, because she, she can't see Ballora when the leaves are like whirl, swirling around. When she puts on the glasses, she sees Ballora swirling with the leaves, which is pretty strange. I thought that was strange. Um, but yeah, so then, after that... Um, Casey gets some scissors, and they go to, um, another lady, and they try to steal another purse. Um, so what she's gonna do with, with Kate, what Casey try, wants to do with the scissors, she wants to, um, so, the lady, she just pretend that my Xbox controller is a handbag. So she has, the lady has the handbag, she wants to get the scissors, she wants to cut the handbag off and then take it. But, instead of cutting the bag off, she accidentally cuts the lady's arm, and the, but she still gets the purse though, but... She accidentally, she accidentally cuts the lady's arm, which, um, you gotta feel bad, because she didn't mean to. So, yeah, that's why you shouldn't steal, because you might accidentally do something. Um, so she accidentally cuts the lady's hand, and runs off with the purse. Oh, sorry, my camera didn't focus then. Um, so, yeah. It sort of reminds me of how a step closer when the arm got cut by the, um, saw, but anyway. Um, yeah. So then Casey... Um, she wanted to, um, she was like, no, that's it, I'm, I'm gonna leave. She wanted to start a new life, you know, she wanted to get a job, she didn't want to steal, you know, she didn't want to do any of that crap. And so she, um, she goes, she leaves, I don't think she tells the boys, I don't know if she tells the boys or not, she doesn't say. Um, so she's sitting down on an old, on a bench, and then an old lady starts walking, and she sits down on the bench, and then they start talking about stuff. And the old lady st talks about, um, stuff, and Casey tells her that she's gonna move. And then the old lady gives her, like, a cookie or something to eat. And she gives her a few things, you know. It was a nice old lady. It was a nice moment in the book where the old lady and, um, Casey was, um, talking. It was, it was a nice moment in the book. It was pretty, pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, um, See, so then she, um, yeah. whoops, sorry. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, so, um, and, um, so she gets on the bus and she leaves. Um, she leaves, and, you know, of course she leaves, so she goes, um, to a new, um, place, and she, um, she get, um, she gets a job, she gets a job, and, um, she works there for a bit, and, um, and she, like, it's like a, um, well, she didn't really have a, um, like an interview, she just walked up at the, um, restaurant, and she said, um, no, I'm here for a job, and then the guy comes out, and he's like, oh, just, um, start by cleaning the tables and stuff, so she cleans the tables and stuff, and she says, no, I don't want to steal anymore, I'm not going to be stealing, so she cleans the tables, stuff, but then, um, the, there's like this, um, there's like this other maid there that cleans the tables and stuff, or, well, she, like the, um, she serves people, she serves people, she's like a waitress, um, so there's a waitress there, and what Casey does, um, she, uh, well, when the waitress gets tips, um, people leave tips for her, Casey takes a few money, 
a bit of money out of the tip. So, like, if it's $5, she might take $1 or $2. She said she wasn't going to steal, but she still did it anyway. She did it for a little bit. And then, um... And then the waitress started getting sick of it. She did not like that at all. She didn't... She got pretty pissed off, uh, um, Casey. And she... She told... Um... She told, um, the guy, um about what Casey's been doing, and then he's like, look, calm down, okay, please, calm down, and then, um, she's like, oh, I didn't do anything, and she was trying to lie out of it, and the guy, um, I don't think he believed anyone, he just said, he didn't know who decided to believe, so he just said, if you're stealing money, don't do it anymore, and you stop getting angry at Casey, um, so yeah, then Casey was like, oh, I'm gonna move again, because I'm getting sick of this, and she sees Ballora a few times, um, swirling with the, the with the leaves again. She puts on the glasses, and she still feels dizzy each time she puts them on. But each time she puts on the glasses, Ballora keeps getting closer and closer to her. And so then, um, one um, one time, she's down on a bench, puts on the glasses, and Ballora is a hands is her arm's length away. So she. Laura was this close to her. How far my arm is. So say um this is Casey. Laura is right here. That's how close Laura got to her. So yeah, each time she put on the glasses, Laura gets really close. Like she got really close that time. She could have. She didn't know what Laura was gonna do to her. So she moved, and um. She found an apartment, and when she went to sleep, um. She had this strange dream where um where Ballora was dancing and um it had like um the thief lie like she was on she was in a st Ballora was on a stage and she like all these curtains were um coming down saying thief liar and something else I don't know but thief liar and something so three big words and um and then Casey woke up from that dream, and um so Blue was trying to tell her something obviously, and so um Casey uh she um what does she do after that? So yeah, she goes to that new um place, and um she moves again, but um she wants to go. For, there's a big job interview that she needs to go to, and so. Um, yeah, she goes to the, um, job interview, and she, um, she needs to have, like, a good dress and good shoes, because, you know, she's poor, she doesn't have much, so she, um, goes to this shop, and she only has, like, 50 bucks, and, like, this dress costs $34, and then these shoes cost, like, um, I don't know, $30 or something, so she won't have enough money to buy both of them, so... What she thought was she was going, she tried, so what she did, she grabbed the dress and she like folded it up, folded it up, put it in her bag, and she grabbed the shoes, and she paid for the shoes, but she didn't pay for the dress, so the dress was in her bag, and so she's like, just the shoes, thanks, I don't want to get the dress, and so then when she, um, she buys the shoes, and when she goes out the store, beep, 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 and, um, so the beeps, they go off. And so Casey, um, Casey sees, she's like, oh, I think I should make a runner. And then, see, we go away. So, um, she thinks she can make a runner, but, um, uh, she sees the leaves. She sees the leaves swirling. And, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so she gets, um, so the beep goes, and, um, 
she like she couldn't run because Ballora was right in front of her and she didn't know what Ballora was going to do so she was too scared to run because she saw the leaves and so then they checked her bag and they found the dress and then they're like we're gonna call the police on you and then got angry at Casey and then this old lady comes up it's not the same old lady from the bus stop it's a different one and she says you know what I'm going to fix all this I'll pay for the dress and every th and you don't call the cops and we'll all be happy and so she paid for the dress, um, because Casey was crying. She was really upset about it. Um, she got really upset. She was crying her eyes out. She was crying her ass out too. And so, yeah, she bought the dress and, um, she went to the job interview, I'm pretty sure. So after that, Casey was feeling a lot better. And, um, she knew that she had to do something. So she still had the driver's license, because in the, um, purse, it had the driver's license on that girl that stole that she stole the purse from at the start of the story at Circus Baby's Pizza World. And so she looked at where she lived. Or she looked up where she lived, yeah. She went to her house, knocked on the door and said, Hey, it's me, Casey. I, I was the one who stole your purse and I just wanted to apologize. I'm really sorry. And then the, the lady was like, Yeah, it's alright. It's, it's okay. It's fine. Come in. We'll have some tea and stuff. And so then, um, the little girl, um, who had the glasses, or well, I'm pretty sure it was her glasses, it was her glasses actually, um, so the little, she, the little girl was there from Circus Baby's Pizza World, her daughter, and so, she's like, oh, I think these belong, oh, hold on, and so, um, yeah, so then the girl asks who's that, and, um, the girl's name was Isabella, and, um, so, um, and the mum's name was Sarah, and, uh, yeah, I'll start reading the final page. Sarah set two mugs of tea and one cup of juice on the, god damn it, on the table. Stolen, not stalled, but you're right. Tell Casey thank you for returning them. Thank you for returning my glasses, Casey. Well, yeah, she gave back her glasses. She, Casey gave back the glasses to Isabella. Isabella said, smiling up at her. Casey smiled back. You're welcome. Casey knew she didn't need them anymore, and besides, they had always belonged to Isabella. Isab really belonged to Isabella. Isabella put on the glasses and let out a gasp of surprise. There she is, Isabella said. The little girl stood still for a mo moment. Glasses on, her mouth agape in wonder, and then she started to dance. That was, um... Dance with me. It was not. It was a pretty boring story, but it was an interesting story. I didn't mind it. It was. Um, it wasn't. I don't think it was better than coming home though. It was. It was better than count the ways though. It was better than count the ways. Count the ways was worse. So, count the ways is my least favorite story. Um, step. Um, Dance with me is my second least favorite. And Coming Home is my third least favourite, and, um, what was the other story called? Um, and Out of Stock is my fourth fa um, my fourth least favourite story. So, um, some theories for, um, the, um, B for Ballora. I th don't know how Ballora was twirling, and the leaves were tw twirling with Ballora. That was something that I don't, I can't explain, that's something very strange, but, um, I feel like when each time that Casey puts on the glasses, you know how she feels dizzy? I think that, um, she was dizzy because each time Isabella put on the glasses, um, she would dance, because in the, at the end it said that she danced, so I feel like that, um, that Casey, um, was feeling dizzy because, since Isabella had the glasses, um, she would dance with Ballora. I still don't, I think, I think only, maybe, only girls can see Ballora, or maybe younger girls, because if the boys, if the boys couldn't see Ballora, maybe only girls can see her. Maybe it was made so only girls can see Ballora. So, yeah. So, yeah, not much theories on, step close, um, step closer. Not much theories on, um, dance with me. Now the final story, one of the most boring stories out of all of the Fazbear Frights, coming home. So, Susie, well, you know, I, I'm not going to go too deep into this story because this story is really boring and I don't want to go into the boring stories. 
So Susie and her sister, um, uh, Samantha, they, um, you know, they, uh, they have a mum, their dad left them, um, and yeah, so Susie, um, there's this tree outside their fa their house, um, Susie called, calls it Oliver, her, she named it Oliver, and, um, Samantha, um, I don't think she liked that name, <coughs> excuse me, and all, Oliver doesn't have many, um, doesn't have many, like, uh, what do you call them, uh, leaves, he doesn't have many leaves on him left, excuse me, all the leaves, they've fallen off him now, so, yeah, um, yeah, so Oliver, um, the trees, it's, you know, it's an old tree, it's pretty big, um, so yeah, and that's what, um, uh, Susie named it, so yeah, Susie, remember the Susie, that's Chica, that's Susie, that's Chica from the games, remember in the gravestones, that's Susie, the person that Michael Afton, I Oh, Michael Afton's the killer. I'm Michael Afton now. I'm not my son. I'm not Michael Afton, my son. I'm William Afton, not Jesus. William Afton killed Susie, remember, in the in the um games. Susie was one of her um one of William Afton's victims. Not Michael Afton. What am I going on about, man? What am I going on about my son? I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Um Yeah, so um yeah, Susie, that's Susie. Susie in this. But this Susie has brown hair. Not the blonde hair. That Susie has in the games, which I think is very, very strange. Anyway, each time Susie um, and Samantha they go, to, each time they go to sleep, they hear this noise. Someone make a remix out of that, please. I'd love to see a remix out of that. I'll do that one more time. <laughs> so they hear that <laughs> every night. Um, and so Susie, she goes outside and she sees Chica outside. So she sees Chica and Chica. Chica's like, sticks her hand out. Susie agrees, and, um, she walks with Chica somewhere, we don't know where, um, but she just goes with Chica somewhere. Ooh, camera's a bit shaky. Ah, uh, so yeah, they go, and, um, mm. So, yes. They, um, that happens, like, every night. Every night, there's a... Every night, every night, every night, yeah. Every, so yeah, every night, um, Samantha always hears the. <laughs> every night, um, yeah. So Samantha keeps hearing that each night, and um. So, um. So um, each time Chica comes out, um. Um, Susie says it's time to go back already. We don't know where. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I assume that it's, um, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I think that. I think it's that. And each time Susie talks to her mum, um, her mum just cries. She doesn't answer. She just cries. And each time Susie talks to Samantha, she never answers. She never answers. Each time she sleeps with Samantha, she doesn't even look at her. She ignores her. And in a part of at one part of the story, Samantha um was like this kid that um Samantha sees, and um Susie says to Samantha, "Go talk to him. Go talk to that kid. There's a boy outside." And um and then Samantha Samantha um just like she doesn't look at Susie, and she doesn't hear Susie. Say that, and then she just walks back, and she doesn't answer to Susie. Um, so yeah, that's pretty sad. And in their house, there's this room. There's this room that um, their dad goes in this office, 
And, um, one day, they went into the office and, um, they, like, apparently they, um, broke some, I'm pretty sure they broke something. In the office, they broke something. And, um, yeah, so their dad never wanted them to go into the office again. And apparently there's, like, this secret room in the office. Like, there's a secret room somewhere. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's, like, a secret room. I don't know. So, yeah. Um, there's a secret room that they weren't allowed to go in and they can't go in. So, yeah. And then there's this part in the book where, um, Casey... Um, where Susie's mum is talking on the phone with her friend. And, um, she's saying... It's been a year since Susie's died to that, to, to that, you know. She said it's been a year since Susie's died. And guess who, and guess what she says next. She references me in the book. She says, and then, um, the mother's friend says, says, um, oh, um, I forget what did she say. Yeah, she uh, her friend says on the phone. She says she died to a serial killer. Guess who that serial killer was? Purple guy. They were probably talking about purple guy. They were definitely talking about um me, William. After the they must have been talking about me, man. I'm very glad they mentioned me. The, they referenced me in the book. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, they mentioned me in the book. No, I mean, they mentioned Purple Guy, which is me, I'm Purple Guy. Um, so, yeah, um, if you don't get the memo, guys, no wonder they've been ignoring and crying each time Susie tries to talk to them. Samantha and, and her mum. Susie's dead. She's a ghost. And so, um, when Samantha goes to sleep, um, she asked her mum to read this book to her, like, the happy little ghost, <coughs> excuse me, and the book's about, like, this ghost, and he's, like, he goes off, and he's happy, he goes off, and gets put to rest or something, his soul or something, and, um, yeah, after that, um, Susie, um, wanted to try and make Samantha actually respond to her, because, you know, how Samantha never talks to her, so, she makes drawings about Chica and stuff. About Chica and this girl. Um, I forget what those drawings are, but they're drawings of Chica and this girl. And, um, Chica walking off with this girl and stuff. And Samantha actually sees the drawings. Um, they actually see the drawings. So, uh, yeah. And, um, then it goes into this thing where, um, there was this little... Doll called Gretchen, 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 something like that. And um, Samantha and Susie, um, they would always fight over Gretchen on who would have it. And like every time, like uh, before um, Susie died, um, Susie, um, every every time that Gretchen went with Samantha, um, they would always study and read books and stuff. And um, Susie didn't want that, and, you know, they kept arguing about Gretchen and stuff, um, and so then, um, Gretchen was hidden somewhere, and Samantha went to go look for him, she didn't know where it was, and so I'm just going to jump straight to the end of the book, because, you know, I've explained enough already, and I don't really, well, I told you guys it was a boring story, so, um, there's these noise, um, so Samantha doesn't ignore the so Samantha hears these noises and get the, guess what the noises are. So she hears those noises again. And so she looks, she gets out of bed. And she goes to look for Gretchen. And so she goes into the kitchen, right? And then Chica. Chica is there. She go, She somehow gets into the house. And then Chica starts chasing after Samantha, she starts walking towards her, you know, starts walking towards Samantha, Samantha's running from some, from Chica, you know, she's running, running, she crawls out the window and comes back in from the front door, and, um, Samantha, she finds Gretchen, and I, th I can't remember where it was, I'm pretty sure it was in Dad's office somewhere, so she finds Gretchen, 
Then she walks outside, and she hides behind the tree, and then Chica comes out onto the balcony. And guess who's with Chica? Susie. Susie is with Chica. Um, and then Samantha walks up to Susie, and then Susie takes Gretchen, and then Samantha and Susie reunite, and I'm going to read you the last page. Um, so they both hug, and, um, it's a really nice and, it's a really sad ending. It made me cry, man. It was pretty upset. Pretty upsetting. Susie let go, and Samantha brushed the tears that ran down her cheeks. Susie smiled and then turned to Chica. Samantha watched Chica take her sister's hand, and she watched Chica lead Susie and Gretchen away. They disappeared just as Oliver dropped his last leaf. Goodbye, Samantha whispered. Oliver the tree, remember? He dropped his... He had no, not many leaves left, and he, that was his last leaf. Um, goodbye, Samantha whispered. Samantha l felt the letting go, and she felt the promise of something new. B excuse me. Susie was leaving, yes, but this wasn't an end. Samantha knew it was... Excuse me, it was a beginning. It's like a happy ghost in the story. Susie was going where she could be with her family forever. So, yeah, pretty sad, pretty... Nice ending though. I didn't. I did like the ending. I did like. That's why I did like um coming home a bit better than um than um what's the story called? Uh, uh, Dance with me. So yeah. The reason I think they called it coming home is because Susie was going home, going to heaven or something. But they just disappeared. So they probably went somewhere. They probably, um, Caesar, Susie and Chica, I think they chose Chica, I think Scott chose Chica, um, for the monster or the animatronic of this story, is because Susie is connected to Chica, because Susie is Chica in the games, so that's what we think. So, um, yeah, um, uh, do I have any theories on it? Um, well, um, each time Susie... Each time, um, in the night, how I told you guys how Samantha could always hear her <laughs> in the night, that's Chica. Every night, Chica and Susie must go off somewhere. I don't know where they go, but they go somewhere. And, um, yeah, so they probably go off somewhere. We don't know where, but they go somewhere. And, yeah, so I'm not going to go too much more into, um coming home, because I didn't like that story as much, so, let's move on to Stitch Wrath, um, so yeah, this is going to be the final part, um, so yeah, the Stitch Wrath, so, um, there's these two boys in a truck, um, Jake and Andrew, so, um, um, Andrew can't see anything, but Jake can see so, Andrew can't see, and Jake can see. And they're in this truck, and they start talking and stuff. And Andrew was saying that he's angry at some guy for hurting him. He got He's angry at some guy for hurting him. Um, it could be William Afton, me, it could be, but we don't know. We don't know. Um, so, um, he said that, um... He wants to get revenge on him. He wants to hurt him back, you know, for what he did to him. Um, so, yeah, Andrew's pretty angry at that. And so then, they're in this box. And so there's this guy. Jake sees this guy trying to take them out of the um, box. And he, um, yeah, he takes them out of the box. And then Jake... A metallic hand comes out, he grabs the guy, and then black streaks go down his eyes. And the, the guy dies. And then Jake's, Jake says, what the hell, why'd you do that? And then Andrew's like, oh, crap, sorry, I need to read the last page. Um, so, yeah, and then um, Andrew's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it. And then I'll read the last page. The thing is, Jake said, that if you do, that if you did do it somehow, whatever is causing you to do it could be, could be in everything it got into you, into. I infected them. I remember now. What? I infected everything I threw my anger at. 
Okay, so everything you infected that could hurt people. Innocent people. Hey, I'm not like that. I just wanted to hurt the bad guy. But you said you infected stuff with your anger. You didn't think that would hurt them? Shut up. Fine, I'll shut up. But we're going to find all the stuff you infected. How are you? How are we going to do that? How are you going to do that? You won't help me? Why should I? Jack thought for a second, and then he tried something. He wasn't sure he could do it, but... Yes, he could. He could feel Andrew's thoughts. He'd be able to find the stuff Andrew infected, even without Andrew's help. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Andrew, apparently he was in... He was in Fetch's body. Or something like that. He said he was, like, in Fetch. And he infected Fetch. But the thing is... Andrew and Jake are connected. Andrew and Jake... Andrew is the heart of Fetch. And then Jake is the eyes of Ella. And guess what? That's the Stitch Wrath. Metallic body, Fetch's heart, two eyes of Ella. The two boys of the Stitch Wrath. Ooh, interesting, very interesting. So the two boys are actually, in fact, the Stitch Wrath. Which is really cool. I think that's really cool that they are both the Stitch Wrath. So, yeah, I'm going to end the video there, guys. So, please leave a like, guys, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which um, tomorrow we will be doing Rocket League. Um, so, yeah, see you guys in the next Rocket League video. Hope you guys enjoyed um, the book review of Fazbear Frights number four. Step closer. Please leave a like, guys, and subscribe. Bye-bye.